It is with great pleasure that I join you all at the Foreign 2000 Conference in Prague this year in person. As many of you know, I completed my presidency in May of this year. Since then, I have been doing something that I have been longing to do for quite a long time. That is, taking some time off. Doing things that a civilian enjoys doing, reading, having coffee, spending time with my dogs and cats, and sleeping, of course. Now, during this time, I received many invitations for overseas visits. And I have been given a lot of thoughts on where I should make my first stop once I am rested. Finally, I decided that one of the most meaningful and important things I would like to do is to connect and be among like-minded friends. Friends who have dedicated their lives and careers to safeguard democracy and its values. Friends who are not afraid of intimidation and shy when challenged. That means friends like you. It is because people like you that the world has been able to withstand tough challenges. Tough Challenges like the pandemic, the authoritarian influence, infringement on human rights, and climate change, and even war. All your efforts and hard work have made this world a better place. Another reason why I wanted to be here is I want to thank you all in person for your continuous support for Taiwan and its people. I want to begin my talk by thanking the Foreign 2000 Foundation for inviting me to take part in this year's conference again. And I want to express my appreciation to Executive Director, Mr. Kapoor, and his team for organizing such a meaningful event every year and for their dedication in facilitating interactions among democracy advocates. I also treasure the consistent support and friendship for Taiwan very much. Many of you might not know my connection with Foreign 2000 started 20 years ago. And I attended the 8th Annual Foreign 2000 Conference in 2004. After serving as Taiwan's Minister of the Mainland Affairs Council, for four years. I still remember joining former President Harville for the inspiring discussions at the forum on how we could empower civil society in the globalized world. A month later, former President Harville visited Taiwan at the invitation of the Taiwan Foundation for Democracy. During his visit, former President Harvard shared with the people of Taiwan inspirational stories of people of Czechia, how students and ordinary citizens fought authoritarianism and one-party rule and championed democracy for their country. So I'm very happy to see, after more than two decades, Foreign 2000 is still standing at the forefront, providing an effective and inclusive platform for global leaders, advocates, and thinkers to openly discuss the most pressing issues of today. Issues such as the global cooperation of democracies, the role of the civil society, democracy and human rights development, the rise of authoritarianism and neoliberalism and ways to counter them, and the impact of technology on democracies. More importantly, we are gathered here today to have an important conversation on democracy's resolve and resilience. The world has endured quite a lot in the past few years, 
Democracies around the world have faced unprecedented challenges, from the pandemic to the subsequent economic downturn, from the effects of climate change to non-proliferation and war. We found authoritarian regimes becoming more confident than ever in their way of rule. We could feel that they now truly believe that authoritarianism is more adaptive than the democratic system. And their leaders want to export their way of governing to the rest of the world. Through gray zone activities, military threats, and invasion, and cognitive and information warfare, authoritarian regimes in an increasingly aggressive manner are now aiming to erode our citizens' confidence in democratic institutions and polarize our societies. Amidst all this, Taiwan stands on the front lines of the assault. The most recent action taken is China's announcement earlier today for a military exercise called Joint Sort 2024 B. For more than half a century, Taiwan has faced constant intimidation from the Chinese communist regime, which has tried every possible way to annex Taiwan. And those threats only intensified as Taiwan became an integral part of the international community, with democracies and their leaders demonstrating their support and willingness to court collaborate and visit Taiwan. On the other hand, the experience of decades of constant intimidation and dealing with the fickle nature of international environment made Taiwan society and its leaders resilient and pragmatic. Taiwan, in the all of society manner, worked diligently to counter coercion and intimidation through security collaboration with like-minded allies. Our work also includes military reform, civil defense, and media literacy. And during every critical juncture, Taiwan's civil society activated itself and worked towards the goal of safeguarding Taiwan's hard-earned democracy. In other words, the people of Taiwan demonstrated time and again that democracy is a non-negotiable part of who we are. It is also a part of our unwavering identity, even though safeguarding who we are has required courage and persistence. It is the commitment we made as Taiwanese. This past January, amid military intimidation, information manipulation, and cognitive warfare, Taiwan kick-started what experts call the super year for elections, where half of the world's population in 72 countries will go to the polls and elect their future leaders. The people of Taiwan actively participated in the campaign activities, then went to the polls excitedly to cast their votes for those they deemed qualified and suitable to represent and lead them. It is evidence to me that democracy is truly the only game in town for Taiwan, and life in Taiwan is unquestionably free and democratic. Not only were the Taiwanese living their lives as proud Democrats, Taiwan continued to support and share its experience and work with like-minded countries to safeguard the liberal democratic world order and to tackle the challenges the world has continued to face. The government and citizens of Taiwan have been very supportive of Ukrainians. After seeing the unprovoked invasion by Russia and Ukrainians noble fight for their country. 
In addition to providing humanitarian support for Ukraine's relief efforts, Taiwan has also joined its democratic allies in the economic sanctions against Russia. As a result, Taiwan imposed an embargo on the sale of strategic high-tech commodities, such as semiconductors, computer information, and aerospace products. In addition to Ukraine, there are also increasing partnership between Taiwan and member states of the European Union. We have counted the highest numbers of officials and members of the Parliament of the EU and its member states traveling to Taiwan to lend their support. Partnerships in economic affairs, culture, education, technology have flourished because they were also built on our shared values of democracy and freedom. The partnership and friendship do not end there. During the conventions of the World Health Assembly, a number of EU member states spoke out in support of Taiwan's meaningful participation. In addition, the EU included Taiwan explicitly in a joint communication on its strategy for cooperation in the Indo-Pacific. This endeavor pledged to strengthen cooperation with Taiwan in key industries such as semiconductors, information and communication technology, and data protection. Furthermore, the European Parliament passed an act urging the EU to take proactive role with international partners to safeguard peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait, to sustain democracy in Taiwan, and to include Taiwan as an important partner in the EU Indo-Pacific strategy. In response to these efforts, authoritarian regimes have resorted to economic coercion, information manipulation, and influence operation to subvert democracies in Europe and to apply pressure on those who engage with Taiwan. While our friends and partners have remained undeterred, unity and cooperation among democracies became most essential. Unity and cooperation can take many forms. They can be military, such as the transfer of capabilities and technologies that strengthen the democratic camp. They can be economic, such as the development of closer trade and economic ties among democratic countries and the development of critical supply chains that are not subject to authoritarian regimes, blackmail, or disruption. Democracies need to send the signal that intimidation and use of force against any member will result in serious consequences. Unity can also be social and political, like the coalition of democratic renewal established by Foreign 2000. Democracies and their advocates can work in concert to preserve and improve the world order and create new narratives that can make our democratic system even stronger and more appealing. We should also adopt a whole of a society approach that rests on the participation of diverse stakeholders, including independent media, businesses, civil society, women, youth, religious organization, local governments, and the public. Democracies need to be confident about who we are and what defines us so that we can help ourselves and each other. Taiwan's democracy, similar to European democracies, was built on the sacrifices of those who fought against dictatorships. We also have courageous forebearers whose desire for democracy and freedom inspire our future generations. A lot of us have walked a long way to obtain the freedom we enjoy today, and yet there are people still on that difficult path to freedom. We have a shared understanding of how precious and sometimes fragile democracies can be. And also because of our shared experience, we know the importance of why we must stand together. 
Well, we will surely face other challenges in the future. Now that I'm standing here with you all, I wish to tell you that I feel even more confident that by being united, working together, and keeping our beliefs in the values of democracy, we will always triumph. In the past three years, I always ended my video talks with an invitation to the audience to visit Taiwan. Now that I'm here, I still want to end by inviting you to visit my lovely country. Enjoy the delicious food and meet our wonderful people. Lastly, I want to thank the Foreign 2000 Foundation again for the kind invitation. It was a great pleasure to be here and to speak to you all. Thank you.